Okay, so welcome. Um, hopefully this is gonna be a wonderful chat for everybody. I really like to make my presentations very interactive. I like to be very helpful and I like to tell stories. So as I kind of stated while we were getting started and everything, I am not gonna teach you the secrets of Postgres 14 or anything else in this session. This is not going to be a heavy technical session. But I will tell you one very important thing. What I'm gonna talk about today is more important to your career than those technical sessions you attend because I'm gonna talk about the community, and I'm gonna talk about the things that will get you jobs in the future, and that is very, very important, okay? I want everybody to understand in here that while those technical sessions, you need those skills, you also need a community around you when it's time to find a new job or something else. So it's very important to listen and to understand what we're gonna talk about today. So, um, let me get that off the screen. That's really annoying, okay. So about myself, my name is Pat Wright. I've been doing databases for about 15 years. It's been a wonderful experience. I really love it. I'm gonna talk about my past a little bit, talk about some different things. Um, this About Me slide will be up at the end as well too. So this little QR code that is up here, if you wanna connect with me, you'll see it at the end. So you don't have to worry about hitting it right now or anything, but here's some information about me, okay? Um, what I really, and this slide won't really tell you why you should really listen to me. I'm gonna tell that through the stories, but please understand that there's been a long time coming for this talk and these things. So what's most important about the community and why should you be part of it? Now, most of you in here are probably in here because you're, you said, yes, I am an introvert. Maybe I'm an introvert, maybe I just wanna learn more about the community, one of those two things. Either way, you're amongst like-minded people. Um, amazingly enough, I don't know if everybody knows this, but at this conference, most people are introverted. <laughs> Even the people on stage, I will tell you right now, I am an introverted person, okay? People always say to me, now how can you say that, Pat? You organize events, you speak all the time, you do these things, how can you say you are introverted? And I say, well, because I go and take breaks too. I, at lunchtime, I went up to my room and I took a break. I took a moment to myself, I did those things. That doesn't mean that I'm not extroverted and that I can't do this, it just means that you need those breaks as well. So we're gonna talk about that. So what is really, really important is that people want to know why you are doing it, what you are most passionate about. I love this quote from Simon, it's one of my favorites because people really wanna understand what you're passionate about and that's why they hire you, that's why they bring you into the systems, that's why they do it. Now why are these beautiful pictures right here? That's because that's my passion. I have a passion for photography. I've taken both of these pictures. Both of these pictures caused me a lot of pain and a lot of grief, actually, too. <laughs> one of them, the one on the left, the one is called the crack from the Zion's Narrows. That took me um, about eight years to get that picture. It's two parts, okay? <laughs> it's a very long story, I'll tell it another time. But basically, it took me a very, very long time to get that special picture. And that passion and drive is what made me do it. Now, I was able to do that because I have a wonderful job where I can take time off, I can do those things. And I have that because I have community around me. Those same things. The one on the right, the waterfall, um, it's a very quick story. Right after I took that picture, I fell in the very river that that was in. Um, I lost my glasses down the river and I walked home uh, with sunglasses the whole time. It was about a two mile hike down the hill. It was a lot of fun, it was so much fun. Um, but I like to make sure that pictures to me always mean something. And those are stories that I can tell. They're beautiful, but there's also stories that I can tell. So. Make sure you know your why, why you're here, why you're doing what you're doing. That's your passion, that's your drive, that's one of the most important things you should do. Now, let's talk about the introvert side of this things, okay? So, right now, you're saying to yourself, again, he's up on stage, he can talk, he can do these things, I can't. That's not true, <laughs> okay? Anybody can do that with what I call 20 seconds of courage. That 20 seconds of courage is what you need to step across the room and talk to someone else. Or turn to your neighbor in the seats, which we're very far apart, but if you can, turn to your neighbor in the seats and say, why are you interested in this session? My favorite thing that I always get from this is people always say to me, but I don't know what to say to the person next to me. How do I break the ice? How do I do it? Okay, let me tell you a big secret, huge secret. This is the most important thing. Everyone here likes Postgres. <laughs> Everyone here is interested in Postgres, okay? You are at a Postgres conference. Every session you attend, I guarantee you can talk about Postgres. I mean, no hands down, you can talk about Postgres. Or you can talk about the session that you're in right at that time. 
Um, Stephen just did a wonderful session on row level security. I could have asked right at the beginning, turned to the person next to me and said, what are you interested in row level security? That's it. That'll start a conversation. It takes that few little seconds to make a difference. Now, first story. Back in 2006, I'm going to go way back, okay? 2006 was a long time ago. I was at a conference in Orlando, Florida. This was the day after Hurricane Sandy. It was a very large SQL Server conference that had a lot of people not make it because <laughs> of Hurricane Sandy. I chose right before that, I was in a job in a position where I was alone as a DBA. And that's very hard. Anybody that's alone as a DBA, it's very hard in a system. So I knew that I had to get to that conference and I had to meet other people like me. I had to talk to other people. So I sat down in my first session, I turned to a gentleman and I said, what are you interested about this session? And it just happened to be, his name was Thomas LaRock. Thomas LaRock previously was the president of, P of SQL Pass about four years ago. Him and I have been friends now for over 15 years. We've been great acquaintances. We've volunteered in the community together. We've built communities together. We've done so many things all because of that one conversation that said, what are you interested in this session? And that's the difference. These people that you make connections with at the community and in the conference make all the difference in the world, okay? And again, you can do it, an introvert. So 20 seconds of courage is all it takes. Now, what I'll add to that is how do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do what I just said? You make a script, okay? You tell yourself in your head, how, what am I gonna say to the person next to me? Now, again, you might be very scared to do this, you might not want to do this, whatever it is, you just gotta keep telling yourself in the script over and over again in your head, this is going to make a difference in my life. Be specific. I want a new job because I can't take my boss anymore. <laughs> you know, or I want a new job because I'm sick of getting paid a tiny amount of money. Whatever it is, whatever your script is, tell yourself and that's why you wanna to talk to somebody. And that will make all the difference in the world, okay? So be very specific and be very blunt. This is not a new concept. This is used in a lot of different places out there. Um, a lot of people that do Alcoholics Anonymous, a lot of people that do weight loss strategy, a lot of people that do other things, this is what they do, make a script. Um, when I was um, losing weight, and I've gained a little bit back, but I've lost a lot of weight, um, I would have to do the script for myself to avoid donuts. I love donuts, they are the greatest thing on the planet, and they still get me to this day. I will walk by a donut shop or a 7-Eleven and I literally have to tell myself the script that I do not wanna be a 500 pound person and I do not wanna be that person, so I have to be that script and I have to do that to myself. But this will make a difference if you can tell that script to yourself and make that change, okay? So when you're sitting next to someone, tell yourself a script. I want to change my experience right now and to do that, I'm gonna make a connection. Okay, uh, any questions so far? And please, if you have a suggestion on another thing that you have done that works, feel free to speak up. I, like I said, I like this to be interactive. I like this to be something that if you have an um, opinion to weigh into, that you can bring that up. No questions. Hopefully nobody's falling asleep. I know I've got the afternoon session. I'm trying to keep you all awake. Okay, so this is another great one. We all face this imposter syndrome, okay? Everybody comes to me for their first presentation and they say, I've only been doing this for one year or I've only been doing this for two years. How do I, how do, I do this? I can't present. I, you're talking to people that are core contributors of Postgres. How am I gonna present to them? Well, you are. <laughs> it's that simple. The reason is, is because they have a viewpoint that you don't, I mean, that is completely different than yours. They may have been using it for 15 years, but you have a completely different view. So you have something to offer. You always have something to offer. Whether this is you're gonna to try to present at a conference or whether this is talking to the person next to you. Again, you may say to yourself, I've got nothing to offer the person next to me. They're a core contributor. They know everything about Postgres. Why don't you talk about you know, photography <laughs> or something else. We got into a great discussion at my table um, at lunchtime or at breakfast today. We were talking about land in the Pacific Northwest because I'm looking at moving to the Pacific Northwest. Two of the other gentlemen that were there both live in the Pacific Northwest. We had a great conversation about it. We didn't mention Postgres once. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that because that's what community is about. It's not just about Postgres and just about SQL and everything else. It's about everything. So. 
talk about whatever works. You know, you always have something to offer someone else. Um, back in the past summit, in the early days of the SQL Pass summit, one of my favorite things they did is they had this little um, sheet where you found other people to talk to. And one of the things on the sheet was find an author of a non Postgres book or a non SQL book. Okay? Now, I kid you not, there are 50 or 60 authors at most of these conferences. Find someone that hasn't written a technical book at one of these conferences. It's really difficult, okay? It's really, really difficult. And we did. We found several people that had written children's books, and we had found several people that had written gardening books. And it was so interesting to hear and learn from those people that it makes all the difference, okay? So don't be afraid to talk about something completely outside of the technical space. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the, yes, go ahead, Stacey. Um, just one thing on the technical mm -hmm. side of things. If you've only been doing it a couple of years, you have a perspective mm -hmm. and curiosity that people who work with it long term don't. Yes. And you come up with the questions that cause the senior people to go, oh, we need to fix that. Yes. So do not let the fact that you are junior compared mm -hmm. to people you're talking to intimidate you because oftentimes those, are the source, those people are the source of new ideas for improving technology. Yes, and, and Stacy brings an excellent point too. If you attended one of the keynotes this morning from Ryan Coons, that was wonderful, wonderful keynote. He talked about his perspective very differently from the SQL Server community into the Postgres community. Him and I are having a lot of discussions about that because I felt the same way. I was in the SQL Server community for a long time and I came into the Postgres community and I have a much different view of what community looks like. A very, very different view. So that allows us to bring in that new view. It doesn't mean it's wrong, it means it's a completely different picture to what you're seeing and it allows us to change and um, do things differently so it's very important to bring that view to the table um, the other part on here once upon a time I just told you a story earlier always tell a story whenever you're talking about something people will remember stories not facts I am telling you stories in this presentation about my photography and everything else so that you will remember those ideas and concepts um, that way you'll remember that idea instead of just, hey, go and do these five steps no matter what whenever you're doing something. No, tell a story whenever you're doing something. So the story of meeting someone else. Another great story was earlier today, I sat down at lunchtime. Another wonderful tactic I do whenever I go to a, um, a, to a conference is I will go to a lunchtime table and I will go to a table that I don't know anybody. Now I know what people are saying. Is they're like, wait a minute, I wanna go with my friends and I wanna talk to the same thing. You see your coworkers every day at work, or you talk to them on Zoom. Don't do that. <laughs> at a conference, you're there to meet people you don't know. You need to sit away from anybody else. When I tell my employees to go to a conference, I said, I don't want to see you eating together unless it's dinner or something else, period. I want you out with other people in the community so you meet them. So I always go to a table, typically, where I know no one. And that way I can start up a conversation or I can ask them about it. I met the wonderful people from Confreaks that are right back there that are taking our videos and everything today. That might result in them helping me with one of my events in the future. That's networking. That's exactly what you want when you come to an event. Um, earlier today I met a gentleman from Jamaica and that was a wonderful conversation and that also means that now if I ever wanted to talk to somebody from Jamaica, I have a connection. I have something that I can talk to them and say, hey, what about this? One of my favorite stories of this is that I had a friend in Dallas, I mean in, uh, let's see, he was in um, Texas. I can't remember the exact city. He was in Texas. They, at his office in Texas, they laid a person off. They weren't doing very well. They laid them off. It was part of a resizing program. That person then interviewed at my company <laughs> in Salt Lake City, Utah. I live in Utah. He was in Texas. And you know, I said, well, out of the blue, I'm like, hey, Alan, you know, have you ever heard of this person? I know you're big in the Texas community. You know, he's like, yeah, I laid them off two weeks ago. <laughs> and so I could get a review there. Now, that's kind of a bad situation, but the point is, is that once your network is start to be known, you can call upon other people and say, hey, do you know this person? Can you give them a referral? And they may say, that's the greatest DBA around. You need to hire them now. And that's the difference. Ask anyone hiring right now. A referral means everything. A referral is everything. So if you're at a conference and you meet somebody and you can refer them, that's a big difference, okay? 
So keep that in mind, tell your stories. Okay, questions about this? All right, so here are kind of, this is one of my slides that I'm gonna actually say, here's steps, okay? I'm gonna talk about steps. Again, a lot of this is all stories, but I wanna talk about these steps a little bit. Um, also, I show this book right over here called Change Anything. This is a very, very good book. I really love this book. If you can look it up, I would strongly suggest it. It is about changing habits and how you do things, okay? It was written by a group of people in Utah um, in Alpine, a city in Utah, and they do all this research about how habits and how people work and how they can change their habits, okay? I will tell you this, if you read this book and you go through it, you gotta read it a couple times because it's really, really hard to do. Again, let's go back to the donut thing. I'm losing in the donut war right now. I can tell you right now, I'm losing the donut war. I, I've completely failed the donut war here in New York City and I will continue to fail it all week long, okay? <laughs> When you guys see me with what, just say you're failing, Pat, and that's fine. I'll, I'll agree with you, and I'll be happy about it. <laughs> so check out that book for sure. The big things that you always want to do in these steps is start with why. You are here to learn something about Postgres, but if you go to a conference and you just learn something about Postgres, what was the point of not just going to YouTube and watching the video? Okay, you need to meet other people. You need to network. Conferences power is networking. If you're not networking, I would tell this to my employees, if you're not meeting one to two people at the event, you're failing the event. You're failing what you've done, okay? That's how I see it, because that's the most important thing. If you go to an event and you meet no one, that's a problem. So um, start with why, have passion in whatever you do. I love to tell a story. If you really want to see a master storyteller on stage, watch David Phillips on YouTube. Just search for David Phillips on YouTube. The man is amazing. Um, every time I watch it, I hate it because he starts a story and he just ends it. And he says, you see what I did to you there? I'm like, well, tell the rest of the story. <laughs> and he never does. It's, it's horrible. Um, every time I rewatch that, I'm like, I'm never going to you know, watch this again. And I do it every time. Um, pause the introvert. Wonderful story here I talked about earlier that sometimes I just go up to my room, I relax, I take a break. We have a quiet room here where you can relax and take a break. Do not feel bad about that ever. If someone comes up to you during that time, just say, hey, I really want to talk to you, but let me have a little bit more time and we'll come and chat around 3.30 or 4. Or let me come find you in a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. One of my favorite presenters, her name is Andrea. She's also one of my very good friends. Andrea Allred dresses up as a princess for every conference she goes to. And I don't mean small dresses, okay? I mean full flowing gowns, tiara, everything. She is a princess. And she does this all day long at these conferences. Now, she's the biggest introvert I know. <laughs> don't get me wrong, this woman is an extreme introvert and she will say every time when I'm done at the end of the day, I go into my room and I just disappear. Sometimes she'll karaoke at night or something a little bit, but after the conference, the whole weekend, she's like, yeah, I don't do anything but vegetate out on Sunday, and I do nothing. I'm very similar to that. On a Sunday after a conference, I'm like, yeah, don't talk to me. <laughs> I'll read my reviews, and that's about it. But the point here is, is that pausing it for that short amount of time is what makes the difference in your life. You can find a way to pause it with your script in your head, with your things that you say, to be able to get through that point. So... Figure out a way to pause your introvert in whatever you do. Willpower is not the answer. This book talks about that a lot. If you think that you're going to walk into a thing and just say, I'll will myself to do it, no, you're not. Okay? Have a script. I, I have lost the willpower debate in every donut war I've ever had, no matter what. I've lost every single time. <laughs> and I'll never win with willpower, okay? So please learn your scripts. Use that. Don't consider yourself bad or wrong because you failed either. That's the big thing. A failure is only something that you have to learn from. That's it. You don't have to worry about failing. Again, I lose the donut war. I'm not going to kill myself over it. I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to say, nope, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to just get up the next day and try it again and try again. You have to do that. Okay? Life's a journey. Enjoy it. I always say that too as well. Um, it's one of my favorites. So here's down to the actual technical part of this or the part of this is like, Here's guided to Postgres. What can you do out in the community? What can you do to really get started involved with your communities? Meetup is one of your places to go. You have a local users group most likely near you. Most cities have some sort of users group. There's some sort of Postgres users group, or maybe it's on another technology use. Whatever it is, start attending. 
I'm not saying you have to go present. I'm saying you have to start attending. That'll make the first difference. Once you start attending, then see about maybe, hey, I wanna present in the future, or maybe you present first to your team in a brown bag lunch or something else. A lot of people come to me and say, I don't know what to present or I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, first, you present all the time. If you're a database professional and an engineer comes to you and says, how do I write this query? You're presenting to them. You're teaching them something. It's that simple. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. The only difference is the size of the room. That's it. It's, it's the same thing. You know how to do it. You just got to do it at a different scale. So meetups are great. Um, Slack is wonderful. Robert is actually here who helps manage the Slack channel and stuff. Um, he's hanging around. But Slack is a great place to talk and get to know people. Um, if you meet someone here at this conference, I strongly suggest you get into Slack and follow up with them. That way, when you're back at home in your own office and something goes really bad, you could type in Slack, hey, do you know what happens when this happens? Or do you have any suggestions around this idea? Even if it's not something they know, just saying, hey, I'm not sure where to go with this. Do you have suggestions? It gives you another person to bounce ideas off of. And that's what community is about. So Slack is a great one. There is a mailing list out there. I will be 100% honest. It's quite antiquated to have a mailing list. Um, I'm, I'm much more, <laughs> yeah, Stacy's gonna be upset with me, but I'm much more about Slack or some of the newer technologies besides a mailing list, but it's there. <laughs> you can definitely use it. Um, I personally like Slack if I can chat with people directly and quickly. I know, Stacy can get upset with me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And Slack is like an interruption to my interruptions. So just email. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and that is the point. Use what you feel is best. Again, I'm going to put my opinion in here. I'm standing on stage. But you're absolutely correct, Stacey, is that you have to use what works for you. If a mailing list works for you, then please do it, by all means. But reach out and talk to other people about it. Post those questions. Do not feel like you cannot post a question either or ask something. Say, yep, I know I can post this because I can do it. I'll tell you right now, the other reason I like a Slack or a connection with someone is that if something truly goes bad, you can possibly even pick up the phone and say, hey, we talked at the conference about this. Do you want to jump on a call or a Zoom or something else and say, can you help me? I've never turned someone down that says, hey, can we just come and discuss this or come up with this idea? I had a friend reach out to me just a few weeks ago, and we went to the office, and we literally just whiteboarded up his architecture and tried to walk through it and ideas. I didn't have the solution. We, all we did was bounce ideas off each other. That's it. I, I didn't charge. We didn't do anything for it. It's just, that's just helping community. That's what it's about. And you should do that whenever you get a chance. Okay? All right. So I'm pretty sure that's my last slide. Like I said, this is a little bit shorter of a session on purpose because I want to bring up also any questions you have, anything that you feel like has been something that you can't get over as far as the introvert side of things. And I'm pretty... I don't know, what am I, 10 minutes, 15 minutes early? We didn't have too many questions, too. Um, this does take you to my LinkedIn. Um, if you do connect with me, I would love to connect with you, first of all, please. I would love to connect with you, but please do tell me why you're connecting with me. On LinkedIn, me personally, I do not accept connections that don't really mention it. If you say, hey, I saw it at the conference, or we talked about this at the conference, great. I want to connect with you. I absolutely want to. But if you just send me a blank one, I get too many of those. <laughs> There's a lot of recruiters on this planet right now. And yeah. <laughs> so, but I would love it if you said, hey, we, I loved your session or I really want to talk more about this. That's all perfect things. Yes, Stacy. Oh, hold on. Stacy, she, she wants to have the mic. Oh, what an interesting idea. <laughs> So you were talking about uh, joining meetups just for expanding your general knowledge, yep. but also as eventually a speaker, mm -hmm. um, as the organizer of a meetup, one of the positive things about the pandemic is since we've gone 100% virtual, we have expanded our audience mm -hmm. and we are getting people from outside the San Francisco Bay Area, which is fabulous, but we're also getting speakers that we wouldn't be able to get yeah. otherwise because of geography. Yeah but it's a very good way to expand your community while sitting at home in your bunny slippers. Mm -hmm. And yep. so I really encourage you, there's um, PGUS sponsors a number of meetups and you can find the link on our website. And there's also, you just go to meetup and search PostgreSQL and you get 
pages of results. Mm -hmm. And you can just make friends all over the world yep. by attending a virtual meetup. Yep. And then you could come speak at one eventually. Hint, yep. hint. Absolutely. That's an excellent point, Stacey. Another great point to make to that is that I've ran several meetups now in several users groups. I started the SQL Server one, and I've, I've run, I run a big data one, too. I will tell you, as a meetup organizer, and Stacey will agree with me, we never have a problem of finding, like, I mean, we always have a problem of finding speakers. We always have open slots. Like, maybe it's two months from now, maybe it's one month from now, maybe it's tomorrow. We always need speakers, okay? <laughs> it's something we constantly think about all the time. Who am I gonna get to speak? Who am I gonna get to speak? Because it's, in most cases, it's every month. If you think about that, that's a lot. <laughs> so there is always a chance and opportunity to get out there and speak, always. So definitely get out there and speak as soon as you feel up to doing that sort of thing. And I have an entirely separate presentation on how to present 101, how to get started, how to do that. Um, and if you ever have a question about any of that, I can link you to the YouTube on that because I've done that presentation many times. And I'd be happy to help with any pieces of that. Um, I coach people to speak and present all the time in my community. And I've helped them to start and then present more and more and more because it's selfish of me because I'm an organizer and I want to make sure that I have speakers in the future. That's what it's about. I mean, I want them to grow in their career and I want to be able to have more events with those speakers, so. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama and I'm pretty sure there's no user group there. Do you have any uh, tips or resources or how-to guides of getting started uh, with a new user group? Yes, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the PG Conf site has a bunch of resources right now. I know the PG user group committee, David, and that committee is working on that right now, and there's stuff out there they have right now. So you can go out to PG US community and find that information. Absolutely, though, just as an organizer as well, you can hit me up and I'll start talking about things like, okay, first, first things first is really a meetup or set up as a PGUS users group, and then they'll help to get you people in your area that are in, in PG. And then you just really just start going through the process. Um, it's all about being able to get up there and speak and just say, just say, come in and we will talk to you about whatever you want to talk about, you know. Um, I will say it's a very, very rewarding thing to be the user group leader or something like that because honestly, there's a really good chance careers and consulting and things like that in the future come to you because they always come to the leader. They come to the person that's at the podium and they say, hey, we've got this thing going on. Do you know someone that can do this? Or hey, do you have anybody in the community that does this? You know, And so it's a place for you to see everything that's going on and, and have that experience. So yes, there's a lot of resources out there on the PG site right now to help get that started. And I'll happily talk afterwards too. Um, and like I said, I know Stacy has a bunch too as well. The group's been getting very busy. Um, I'm part of that user group committee too, but I did so much for this event, I haven't been active. <laughs> yeah, I really should have just stepped away, but I, yeah. Maybe after this event, I can do that, you know. I don't know, Stacy will probably say, no, we're gonna get ready for the next one, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I can do both, okay? <laughs> yes, yes, we can do both. So yes, a lot of good things to get started there. Um, just start talking to people is the biggest thing. Um, I would love to see us in events like this in the future start to have ways of meeting with your own area. That's something we did in past a lot. We would have lunches that were really designed in their geographic areas so that you could actually meet someone from, maybe, maybe there are 100 Postgres people in Birmingham, Alabama, but you just don't know them. But if they come to a conference together, you actually get to meet them. And that's something new. We, we found in Utah that we had a lot of people that were coming to conferences, but never to our meetups. <laughs> and we're like, where's the disconnect here? <laughs> so once we met them, we said, come to the meetup. And then they started attending the meetup. So, OK. Any other questions? I can do this. Uh, so I'm uh, the organizer of Chicago Post this user group. And um, actually, the most challenging thing is with pandemic, uh, attracting local speakers. Because interestingly, you can have all this, like as you said, wonderful speakers from all over the world. But what I used to do pre-pandemic, I like my ideal situation was doing like one famous speaker and one like local speaker from what people are doing. And I was 
pretty good about this because when I talk and I love to talk and I talk a lot and people like me and I like I just talk to people around that they would come and do and it was way more difficult <laughs> virtually but what I tell people that's what you told me uh, here I want to emphasize it's very important what I'm telling people you do not have to be famous you do not mm -hmm. have to be Bruce you do not yep. have to be anybody absolutely you work with Postgres and yes. when you work with Postgres you are doing something cool which nobody else is doing yep. each of you yep. and each of any of us yep. absolutely yep. develop something different and you have your unique experience you do not need to come up with presentation just come and tell what you are doing because I guarantee what you are doing nobody else is doing yeah. and I actually got since like we went hybrid I got two local speakers already mm -hmm. there is a person who already volunteered for February I'm like oh my god yes so that's for me it's like the biggest reward that uh, like local people start to ca yeah. come and talk so yeah. I think that's like important to engage people this way yeah. yes thank you yes excellent excellent points um, I love to grow new speakers. When I put on a conference in my local area, I make sure that as many new speakers as possible present. And I do that through basically, I only really give out one session for each person until the session is full, until the schedule is full. And then maybe I'll go to doubles or something like that. I try to get as many new speakers anytime that I can. And it's absolutely, I love your excitement there too, because I do the same thing. If somebody comes to me and says, I would like to speak at your event, I'm like, yes, thank you. <laughs> now I would love to talk about it and then put it out on Meetup and everything, because I want to help with that. And all the organizers do we want to help you grow we want to help you do better things so it's important okay any other questions comments okay well I'm gonna officially let you guys go I'm gonna say you know I'm more than happy to chat for another second uh, did you have something else Stacy okay go ahead I am not entirely unbiased in saying this is the president of the US, uh, but there are many community organizations that you can get involved with locally or on the national level, wherever you live. And that's a really good way to get to know your local community, the bigger community as well. Um, I stand here today in 2021 as the president of PGUS. My Postgres career, and by the way, I am not a technologist, I went to PGCon in Ottawa in 2010 <laughs> Uh, to keep my spouse company. I ended up volunteering, well, getting volunteered, <laughs> yes, because they were short a person. And now here I am. So you never know where an opportunity is going to lead you. Do something simple. Volunteer to stuff badges or bags. Take an hour for red stuff. Find a way. And you never know when you end up. So, also, I want to thank you, Pat. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I love that, Stacy. <laughs> Her and our stories are very close. I actually, we should talk about this because it's so close, but um, I love that you mentioned that. 2006, I put on my first what's called Utah Code Camp. There was 50 people there. It was my first event ever. And the only reason I put it on is because I was on a conference call with Microsoft and they said, we need somebody to put on a Code Camp. None of the engineers raised their hands. I just said, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> And now, 20 years later, I've put on 35 events or something like that across the, across the time. So it's really amazing how one little thing can trigger that much more, and you can do that. It's just that one 20 seconds of courage that it takes to make a big change. So thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you all enjoyed the session, and have a great day. Thank you.